Okay, so this gets us to the end of aggression. As you probably noticed, this has gone on way long. This is the longest amount of material we spend on anything in the course, and each year it actually gets longer, and I actually think I know the reason for it. Three and a half lectures ago, where did I start off talking about my recent uh, exposure to human aggression, which was my doing it and tripping up that jerk playing soccer and everybody was all excited. Let me tell you about another time, the most serious time I have ever been exposed to human aggression. This took place when I was about 20, and this was the first year that I was doing research in East Africa. During that time, the famed notorious dictator Idi Amin was running Uganda, and he was a nightmare. He was just killing people left and right, destroying the country, as documented cannibalizing. He was a nightmare of a dictator. Around the time, he made a mistake. This was spring of 1979, which is he invaded Tanzania and took over some of the land there, thinking the Tanzanians wouldn't fight back, and he miscalculated. The Tanzanian army counterattacked and drove them out of Uganda and decided to drive all the way up to Kampala, the capital of Uganda, and they overthrew Idi Amin. He fled the country, and the country was liberated. And they continued through there, and they opened up a corridor to the Kenyan border, so it was now a swath all through the southern part of the country that was controlled by Tanzanians. So the day after the Tanzanians got things to the Kenyan border, I went into Uganda. Okay, why? This was like amazing. This was history happening. You were hearing like on the BBC that people were dancing in the streets in Kampala. They had been liberated. Amazing chance to see history. This was throughout college. I had been spending a lot of time with Quakers and wrestling with those issues and figured if there is anything that counts as a just war, this would be it. What does this seem like? All these philosophical principles. This actually, of course, was not what was going on. I was a 20-year-old male, and somebody had been staying with me and no longer was, and I was all bummed out, and thus I did sort of a very 20-year-old male adolescent primate thing, which is figuring some violence would do some good things for my brain neurochemistry, and I wanted to go see a war. So I went off to Uganda, hitching through there, and it was appropriately exciting, and some things happened that scared the bejesus out of me. And at some point, I finally decided I have had enough. I want to get back to Kenya. I want to feel safe again. So I'm hitching back, but I had one last thing that I want to do which was, since I was a kid, I had grown up reading about the explorers and the search for the source of the Nile and all of that. The source of the White Nile is in Uganda. It comes out of Lake Victoria in a town called Tororo, and there's a spot there, a bridge, where you can go and stand, and here is where the Nile River begins. And I had to see this before leaving, and I managed to get a ride into there, and I managed to get over to this bridge and stood there. And there was this sort of dam thing that was built, and this bridge was on top, and there was this sluice where all the water came spritzing out and starting the Nile, and I stood there and I looked over the side, and what I saw was there was a Ugandan soldier who had been taken down. There was a staircase along the side down to some sort of panel for controls or whatever, and a Ugandan soldier had been taken down the steps, his hands tied behind his back, and a rope tied around his throat and attached to the panel so that as the water level rose, he would eventually be swept off his feet and would be strangled and drowned in the water. And this body had obviously been there for days. It was bloated. It was floating there. It was being bashed around on the waves. There were crocs trying to get at it. And looking at this guy, a total storm of emotions, thinking, good, that's what you deserve We're being in the army for Amin. Then thinking, no, wait a second, this is probably some poor guy who was forced to do it and was just following orders. Then thinking, no, I know what I think of soldiers who just follow orders. Then thinking, whoa, I would love to get a lot closer and see what's happening down there and thinking, I want to get as far away from here as possible. And I stood there for an hour and a half at that spot staring at this guy until some Tanzanian soldiers chased me away from there. And I think now, 33 years later, that I lecture longer and longer about aggression each year because of that guy. 
What do we do here in our business? We have this general notion that if we are rational, if we are learned, if we are scholarly, if we respect thoughts and truth and all of that, we will make a world a better place. All of us who are professorial have somewhere in there this totally ridiculous belief that if you're allowed to lecture at a subject long enough, it will give up and go away, and that will be the cure for world aggression. If everybody can only be lectured to about the frontal cortex, it will solve, solve world violence. But the basic problem is that aggression is such a messy set of behaviors. Schizophrenia, no question about it, bad news. Alzheimer's disease, childhood cancer, global warming, all of these unassailably bad news. But aggression is a whole lot more complicated because of that point where we started with, which is the same exact behaviors, and depending on the context, it could be something that will get a medal for someone, someone you will want to mate with, vote for, reward, cheer on, join in. And in another setting, it is the most frightening possible thing that can happen to us, and it's the same behaviors in all those cases. And it's for that reason that violence is always going to be the hardest subject for us to understand biologically, and it's for that reason that it's always going to be the one we have to try hardest to understand. And for more, please visit us at stanford.edu.